Six years I struggled with insulin resistance and no one ever told me this simple thing I could do at breakfast that would change everything. I focused so hard on dieting and reducing calories or timing my exercise perfectly, even fasting. All that stuff worked, but why was this one thing missing? The simple thing that we can do at breakfast that literally tells the brain, turn off appetite mechanisms. The biggest critical factor with insulin resistance is inflammation. The single most inflammatory thing that can be in our body is adipose tissue, fat. If we can do this simple breakfast maneuver and lose more fat, we reduce the inflammation that stands in the way of insulin hitting the cell. Thereby, we can start to correct insulin resistance. Spoiler alert, it's not fasting. It has to do with protein, but it's not the simple protein being filling and satiating that we've heard for the last five years on YouTube. It's something that's been a little bit buried in the research up until about a year ago when it started to resurface a bit more on X. First in this video, we'll cover what this actual breakfast hack is. Secondly, we'll talk about the best foods to use it with. And thirdly, we will go into a more specific protocol that you can do, a diet even a structure that you could follow so that you can start to course correct insulin resistance, but also drop serious fat in the process. So what this breakfast protein hack is, is it's something that was published back in the AJCN back in 2005 that got kind of buried talking about what's called protein leverage. Our brain, our hypothalamus and our liver receive signals from protein. And if we do not reach a specific number, protein grams, a protein target, our brain and our liver will continue to tell our body to eat more and more and more calories until that specific protein number is met. This is not the same as saying eat high protein because it's satiated. Yes, it is because digestively it takes a long time, but it's the same kind of thing like fiber, et cetera, et cetera. Great, but this isn't what's happening. And the thing that's super important is that we hit this target. I'll share with you what the target number is, but we need to expand a little bit more on how we time it and utilize it. What the studies are showing is that you need about 0.6 grams per pound of body weight as the minimum target. So this means you want to try to hit that target with breakfast. And we have newer studies that show that you can consume a lot of protein in one sitting and still assimilate it. This is extremely liberating for insulin resistance because it means that you could eat higher amounts of protein with breakfast, hit your protein target, and you're not going to have a strong appetite. So you'll eat less, you'll drop more fat, and inflammation will go down and it'll improve insulin sensitivity. Remember, insulin sensitivity is an inflammatory condition more than anything else. The reason that this helps with insulin resistance so much is once the brain and the liver are no longer signaling to the body to eat so much, you have counter-regulatory hormones that are secreted. And this actually reduces inflammation and improves insulin sensitivity. I wish that I had known this because this was way easier than all the stuff that I did. Now, I'm indebted to all the stuff that I did because I built this wonderful channel and a great business out of helping people with it and teaching the things that I've done. But realistically, meeting those protein goals early in the day and hitting that target changes the entire ecosystem. Now we need to talk about the specific timing and how the rest of the day looks. And then next we'll talk about specific foods that have a really powerful impact. So great, you've hit your target. That's not your total protein goal, that's your brain target. You've hit that first thing in the morning, that's great. What does the rest of the day look like? Well, a lot of this signaling also has to do with the gut, okay? So one of the things I would recommend is after you have your breakfast, after you've digested, take a probiotic or drink some kefir. Get those probiotics, get that gut working the way that it's supposed to because this communication with the hypothalamus and the gut is very critical too. We've seen that in the literature. I put a link down below for the probiotic that I use. If you need a good probiotic, that's the one. If you're already using one, that's great. I really think this is probably the only one that I would recommend because they actually put their best foot forward with clinical evidence and actually publish their own science, which for me, that carries a ton of weight. And for me, it's the only one that's made a noticeable difference in my appetite, but also in just my brain and how I feel. So that link is a 25 
20% off discount link for Seeds Daily Symbiotic. Again, it's in the top line of the description. Just try it about 30 to 45 minutes after you eat so you're fully digested so it doesn't get broken down too much with the hydrochloric acid during digestion. When it comes to lunch, you still want to target protein, but you want more of a rapid digesting protein. Before you sit down for lunch, having a whey protein shake sounds a little bit wild, but what happens is even temporarily, we are waiting for these protein needs to be met. So we have a daily target, but it does sort of migrate a bit throughout the day. There's even individual protein targets around each mealtime. Again, this is separate and apart from just the whole protein is satiating thing. But in a minute, we're gonna talk about other foods that we need a target for. Other foods that if the body doesn't get enough of, you'll just keep eating, eating, and eating until you get to it. Okay, so back to lunch. You need to get that protein in. So a whey protein shake before you sit down for lunch will make it so it's a lot easier to not overeat with lunch, okay? Now with dinner, I want you to allocate your carbohydrates to dinner time. Now it sounds crazy for people that are insulin resistant. I don't wanna have carbs before bed because it'll spike my glucose. Trust me on this. What happens if you have carbs earlier in the day is you have the second meal effect. The carbs that you had with lunch will actually impact higher blood sugar potentially with dinner. Okay, now that's not the main thing here. The main thing is if you stack your carbs towards the evening and you've done a good job of meeting your protein goals, you naturally won't eat as much carbohydrates throughout the day. And we've seen this. Large, huge, large surveys have shown that the lower the protein intake, the more calories people and animals will eat and eat and eat until those protein needs are met. So if your protein is lower, you're definitely going to end up taking in carbs throughout the day just because those protein needs aren't met. So your calories are going to increase until you get there. Okay, so if you put your carbs in the evening time, they're out of sight, out of mind, and by the time you get there, you might not even want them all that much. So it's a better strategy if you're insulin resistant and you're trying to cut the carbs a bit to sort of rekindle that relationship between the cell and the insulin that got disrupted. Now let's talk specific foods. This is very important. The specific foods matter. Yes, protein is important, but what about the kind of protein? Well, this is where something like eggs in the morning works tremendously well. Eggs obviously have the protein, but they also have the choline. Okay, this is the precursor to a, a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Sounds all fine and dandy if you're a neuroscience nerd, but if you're deficient in acetylcholine, your brain energy is disrupted. And when your brain energy is disrupted, you tend to override via other mechanisms to try to kind of boost that energy. More calories, more sugar, things like that. That's where cravings come in. So eggs are by far number one. But there's an interesting thing. If you can mix a little bit of beef with your eggs, or heaven forbid, if you like beef liver, a little beef liver, those B vitamin and just the multivitamin aspect of beef and beef liver, you hit all these other little micronutrient targets. We're starting to learn that maybe it's less about calories in, calories out, and more about nutrient density. Your body's gonna just crave food until you hit nutrient needs, right? It explains why nutrient void, hyperpalatable processed foods are a problem because we eat a lot of them, but we never hit our nutrient needs, so we eat more and more and more. What if the processed foods weren't inherently the issue that they're processed, it's more that they lack the nutrition? So even a multivitamin might be able to help a little bit there, but beef, beef liver, mixed with some eggs, but then we see evidence on calcium. Calcium is a big one. We need to hit our calcium needs because bone structure and bone health is so important to the body. So what do you do? What I recommend is with breakfast, as wild as it sounds, take a half of a shell and of your egg and crush it into the omelet, right? But you could also have some cheese. You could also eat some sardines with the bone. You could also have some cottage cheese. You could have some Greek yogurt, some Icelandic skier. Just put an emphasis on the dairy protein to get that calcium in. So just to recap here, we need 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight early in the day. And we know that we can handle it with the doubly labeled studies, okay? That means we see the protein absorbs even at high amounts, okay? You want higher fast absorbing protein at lunch and you want carbs allocated towards the evening and you want the nutrient dense in the morning. If we do this, we can take the focus off of calories for a moment and eat until true satiety when our brain tells us that we're actually full. Now, a lot of this isn't gonna work well if you're not sleeping well. I did a video talking about how just three grams of this compound legit can make you sleep through the night without having to get up to pee even. Like it helps you sleep and it's not like a sleep aid. So I put that link right here for that video if you wanna check it out. And I'll see you tomorrow.